Okay, so Newcastle, they started with five at the back, four in midfield, and one up front. Man City, well, Guardiola stuck with his, his usual 4 3 3 system. So it's going to mix the systems in together now. And we're going to talk about some of the keys to, to the game. As we know from watching the game, Newcastle conceded a goal within the first 30 seconds. However, this wouldn't have affected their game plan particularly. Their idea was to defend deep and hit Man City on the counter-attack. So taking a look at the important parts of the game, Newcastle had nine players defending in this area. Their idea was to get numerical superiority in this box in front of their penalty area and then try and hit on the counter-attack. So you can see we've got nine Newcastle players in this area against five Man City players. By congesting this area, they prevented the Man City creative players from, from opening up the game. Okay, so if we take a look at the, the back four for Man City, often playing with, with high open fullbacks, looking to get down the wings, Newcastle pinpointed the spaces in between the centre backs and the fullbacks to try and break with their counter attacks in between these areas, thus allowing their own wing backs to, to join forward into the attack. Another key part of the game was quite simply the defending of the penalty area. We'll look at some real examples, but when the ball was in the wide areas, Newcastle filled this area with as many players as possible. And unlike Manchester United the other day, which I pointed out with Paul Pogba, this area here in front of the, the penalty spot and just the edge of the box, Newcastle defended it really well, defended it with numbers and prevented City from picking up the ball on the edge of the box and causing travel. Okay, so Rondon's position was trying to prevent passes coming into Fernandinho in the middle there. During this midfield press, when the ball came out into one of the centre-backs, it was the responsibility of one of the centre midfielders to jump out to press him. This allowed the winger or the right midfielder at the time to hold his position, prevent these passes from coming inside. And then when a pass comes out into the Man City fullback, that they could then come out and press him. This would in turn would then lead into the other midfielders shifting across. And any pass that was able to make its way through into that set, into that shaded area, one of the centre backs would then push out and to try and prevent that person from turning. They would then become compact and shift backwards, preventing City from dominating that midfield area and then defending the penalty area. I'm just going to use this clip to highlight how tight the defensive lines were from Newcastle and try and point out some reasons why Rafa would want to defend so deeply. Here in this area we can see the midfield four and Rondon. So this space is nice and tight so that Fernandinho can't really get much time on the ball and also they've shifted across to try and prevent the passing lanes in between their lines. Okay, So you can see here that they can't make a pass into Fernandinho really because because Rondon is, is close to be able to press him. De Bruyne, difficult to make a pass into him also. And Silva there, you can see that the pass can't come directly into his feet. So they're trying to block off those passing lanes into the middle of the pitch. This has forced Man City wide. Here I'm highlighting the whole system, the five, the four, and, and Rondon is up front. And this is that area that I was talking about. Trying to get nine players just in front of their penalty area and only four players within their system. So it's tight defensive lines and it's really difficult to try and create something when there's so many players in such a small space. Looking at the Newcastle United mid press, here I'm highlighting that Rondon is covering that pass into Fernandinho like he was doing for the, throughout the whole game. Here it's really clear Rondon's role trying to prevent that pass coming into him. And now I'm just gonna highlight the Newcastle midfield line. So we've got the four midfielders, and then if we notice that the centre-back from, from Manchester City, John Stones, is bringing the ball out, and it's now the responsibility of the centre midfielders of that midfield four to jump out and press. The reason a midfielder jumps out to press is to try and force that ball out into the Manchester City fullback. We can see that the Newcastle United midfield will shift across to try and cover the gap left by the player jumping out. 
So we can see the passing options there for the Man City fullback. He could play inside into Sterling, although the Newcastle player is pressing along that passing line to try and prevent that pass coming inside. The midfielders shift the cross, trying to force the play outside into the wing, which in this game was De Bruyne, because he'd switched places with Sterling in this attack. But of course, when you've got quality, it is difficult to prevent those passes coming inside. However, look at all those Newcastle players. Again, nine Newcastle players against just three Man City players in that area makes it really difficult for Man City to be creative inside there. Newcastle ended up making a quick counter-attack and winning a free kick in the opposition half. Okay, this time I'm just going to highlight the fact that Newcastle were not going to press high up the pitch and just defend in that midfield block. Here I highlight that back four and Fernandinho and now just highlighting the fact that those Newcastle players have no intention of going in to press that ball and it's just going to drop back. Okay, so here they are just dropping back and highlight again those exact same five players which I highlighted before. Rondon again preventing that pass coming into Fernandinho and now again that centre midfielder of that midfield four is going to jump out to press Stones and Stones really only has these passing options to go forward. He can either try and force a ball through into De Bruyne or play a ball out into his fullback. By jumping out with the centre midfielder to the Stones this allows Atsu to hold his position inside preventing that pass into De Bruyne giving him time to then jump out and to press the Man City fullback. But of course, when you're playing against the champions, this pass inside, even though you're trying to prevent it, is still possible with the quality which Man City have got. But when these passes were coming through, one of the Newcastle centre-backs was always jumping out quickly to try and prevent that player from turning, trying to make it compact in there and prevent them from being creative in those midfield areas. In this case, he jumps out, but again, De Bruyne, too good, and drives through into the midfield area. So at this moment here, De Bruyne's broken through. We've got the, the four players there from Newcastle, which are left from that back five. And no one now has the intention of pressing any further. Once one of those five have been beaten, the other four draw back and they defend the area. And of course... All of the other Newcastle players drop in to defend the area as well. Okay, so at this moment here, when Aguero gets his shot away, we've got seven Newcastle players on the edge of the box, making it really difficult for City to create any goal-scoring opportunities. Just highlighting that back four and Fernandinho again. Rondon, yet again, preventing the pass coming into Fernandinho's feet. Again, midfielder. Opposite side this time, jumping out to press Laporte. And yet again, City are able to filter a pass through into that area. This time, the centre back doesn't jump out, but again, it's just so compact in there, it's really difficult for Man City to create chances. Highlighted the back five and the four midfielders again. At this moment here, you can see it's pretty difficult for him to filter any passes forward, so they have to come backwards and then go out wide. Okay, so Fernandinho is going to play the ball into Walker, and Walker's now going to play a ball out into the feet of Sterling, who's staying wide. And by the time that that ball arrives, look at how close the Newcastle fullback is to getting into Sterling. If they only play four at the back, then the distance is a lot greater for him to get there, and probably Sterling can get past him and get a ball into the box. Now look at the position of the other four defenders in that back five. Really tight covering a lot of the penalty area. And then look at the position of the four midfielders, covering the edge of the box, preventing any ball getting knocked back into that area from being an opportunity for Man City. In the end, Newcastle were able to snuff out the danger. From goal kicks, they would play the ball along up to their central striker. However, when the ball was in play, they would often try to entice Man City forward just by playing balls in to here and then a little return pass into the goalkeeper. Why were they doing this? Well, to try and suck the Man City team further out so that when they did play these long balls, there was more space or less Man City players in these areas. So they were trying to entice them forward, trying to get Man City to push 
into these areas so that then they could play that long ball over the top. The important man here was their central striker. He had to try to occupy these two Man City centre backs so that then the midfielders who had come into these areas here could then try and break through that line in between the centre back and full back. Rafa used the the direct attack instead of trying to play through Man City. Here I've just highlighted Aguero and the distance which he is from the goalkeeper. So when the goalkeeper's got the ball, he's just going to hold it and try and wait for Man City to come out and press. So when they do play that long ball, that there's more space and less Man City players in the opposition half. Okay, so the keeper's going to play this pass into here. By the time he takes a touch, we've now got three Man City players, not just Aguero, two other players moving in to try and press. He actually holds the ball for a while before turning and then playing a pass back to his goalkeeper. This is the moment now where he plays the ball back into his keeper. The keeper also holds onto it for a second or two. That allows just enough time for De Bruyne to come into your shot as well. So that's now four Man City players in that area. So now that ball has been played over, we've got the four Man City players in the back four. I've just highlighted Rondon because the ball is going to come into Rondon and he's going to aim to flick that ball into the path of those two wingers who have come inside and trying to break in between those defensive lines. So in between the centre-back and the full-backs on either side, trying to break in between there. That also sucks the players inside, allowing their wing-backs to get forward too. On this occasion, though, the Man City defence drop back and they're unable to, to find space in behind. But it was a clear sign of intent from Rafa that this was a tactic that they were going to use. This is another example of Newcastle playing long, trying to suck in the Man City players just a little bit further into their half so that they can play that long ball and, and make the most of the space which is left in the City half. Here he's just put the ball on the floor, trying to suck in those three Man City forwards just a little bit further into their half and then playing that long ball over the top. Here the ball's come into Rondon. I'm highlighting now the Man City back four. So we can see that both centre-backs have been sucked into Rondon. And now we can see the position of those two Newcastle wingers who have come inside trying to break in between that line, which I pointed out between the centre-backs and the full-backs. And now if this ball had been flicked on, there's two Newcastle players which would be in behind the Man City defence. So it's a good tactic, but on this occasion, the Man City players weren't communicating properly Either one, they should have just dropped back, or two, communicated so only one of those centre-backs jumps out. So a good tactic from Benitez to utilise, and it was quite effective in disrupting that Man City back line. This time we're going to have a quick look at the transitions. So again, that positioning from the Newcastle team, really deep, preventing from City from playing through the middle. Here they try to play out wide, and that... And the Newcastle fullback is able to intercept the ball and play a ball forward immediately and to start a counter attack. Always it was these three players breaking forward for the counter attack first, the two wide players, and then Rondon. Okay, so he was able to carry the ball all the way forward, but you can see that only three of the Newcastle players were able to get forward. And credit where credit's due, eight Man City players getting back to defend. That's a sign of a good team when everyone's willing to work hard and get back. Atsu on this occasion drives inside trying to trying to get in between the Man City players. Rondon is able to lay it off at two to come in and take a shot on goal. 